Good evening again from Yami B TV. Sending loads of love to you as usual. And before I go on my travels for the night, I thought I'd spoil you all just a little bit more. Now this video is compiled of a couple of evil killers uh, in history, if you get what I mean, and a couple of other uh, normal location individuals convicted of murder that were alleged to have committed murder in the place that I talk quite openly about as probably being one of the most dangerous places that I ever went, or being it Long Larton Prison. And if I'm not right about this, I think Long Larton had probably the most murders in one place uh, rather than the other category A's, unless you historians tell me that there's another place where there was many, many more over a number of years. We already know about the sad case of Dave Armani and uh, I think the other geezer's name was Tomo who got convicted of murder. I think it was in the 80s, if you get what I mean. Um, that was a bodged up case, very suspect conviction there, I have to say. And they both ended up serving life, I think, on top of a life sentence that they were already doing, which probably means natural life. Now, you asked me about Mary and Crusher. Now, if those that don't know, those that do, Mary and Crusher were trans, transvestites or trans, uh, whatever, you don't enlighten me on that bit as well, where they loved each other very, very dearly and were partners in crime. Now, in those early days in Parkhurst, Mary was probably one of the best cleaners that the prison system ever produced. And the Arabs took her on to, you know, to clean out cells and pay them handsomely uh, to leave the wings spotless and that kind of stuff. So they came in handy, not just because of the cleaning side of stuff, um, but because they also, when in payment wise, like when, when jobs came up, they were pretty capable of teaming up together and slashing, cutting and doing hits. Uh, for people as well, which got their, you know, in that life, a, a few ratings more here and there. So everybody just left them and, you know, didn't pay too much attention uh, to their gender and the way that they were and that kind of stuff. Now, what undid everything probably later on down the line, and this is why I point to Long Larton as being that, the most dangerous place, if you get what I mean. And I think that, that my, my assumption that the murder rate in that category A was probably worse than many, many, many of the others. Now, the case that was in question was a geezer with the surname of Anwar, um, who murdered uh, his little daughter and had a co-defendant as a wife as well, who also um, got a few years. So, allegedly two men uh, murdered him by way of strangulation, so did um, the forensics say that it was by neck injuries and that kind of stuff. And the staff found the body later on in the evening at some time. Now, what they did, Mary and Crusher, and it obviously it ruined, you know, their, in that life, I suppose, uh, their ratings uh, by everyone, because what did they do? They went and gave evidence against the alleged two perpetrators. And what about this for a plea bargain? If we'll give evidence, if you allow us to spend the rest of our sentence always together and always on the same wing. And guess what? The prosecution agreed, right? Allegedly. So after that, they never came back on normal location. So that was how the Mary and Crusher thing um, ended for them, if you get what I mean. But I guess they got what they wanted and got to spend because during certain times of the sentence uh, by the authorities and that and that kind of the emotional blackmail there if you don't if you will separate you both and blah 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 but being together ultimately was the uh, the one thing on that sentence that made them feel like you know who cares about getting out who cares about this as long as we're together we don't care so that's how they ended up on the rule 43 because they went in the box and they gave evidence. Now, Long Larton again, right? Um, another murder, um, if you get what I mean, with Victor Castigada. I don't know whether many of you were aware of this, but there was a, at this moment in time, 
one day, Victor went on Rule 43 protection. And everybody thought he'd lost his rock. He'd lost his rocker. Like he finally had enough, and you know he's, he he didn't want to know no more or show signs. It made it look like that he was vulnerable, that he was weaker, and blah blah blah. blah. But little did we know that in fact he went on Rule Forty Three uh, to go and do what he did, so that he could get close to that geezer, Texiera, whatever his name was, went over there. And the workshop, because contrary uh, to other belief that, you know, I think I may have mentioned that VPs and inmates and all that could have workshops together. No, no, no. That, I, must have, I must have got that bit wrong, if you get what I mean. What really, really happened, or I was thinking about something else, to be honest. Victor went over there and he took two rocks out of a fish tank and absolutely obliterated Texiera, who was in for killing a child, right? So whether that was somebody sending him over to do a hit, maybe it was personal, maybe there were some family members that got in touch with somebody else that said, all right, if you can get that sorted out for me on blah, 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 because then you think about it, you think, well, Victor, if you're going to go on Rule 43 to go over there, rest in peace, my boy, of course, if you're going to get go over there, why particularly him, if you get what I mean. So the only thing that I could suggest, you know, without allegedly or without absolute facts, because he didn't tell me anything, would be that he went over to do a hit and done it, if you get what I mean. But sadly, cost him another life sentence and shortly afterwards, rest in peace, died of natural causes. Now, sorry, one second. Now that also, you're asking about John Childs, right? Now, remembering today that, all right, in life, sometimes you can have um, men that are not rapists, that are not child killers, and for whatever reason, I've known of men of going on Rule 43 just because they want to be all alone and to do some study and all, they just can't manage normal population again and want to break and go on Rule 43, um, if you get what I mean. So sometimes it's not as cut and dry that, that somebody's actually running away from the wing or have some hidden agendas in their cases that go over to Rule 40. Free. Now, two men went over there and one went over there for nine months and another went over there for three months. And one of those questions that were asked is, what was he like? You know, this is just word of mouth about this John Charles geezer you're talking about. And you know what they said to me? And they, I didn't speak to both of them at the same time. I spoke to them individually and they said to me, that the only time that this geezer smiled is when he was talking about the burning of those bodies and the children and kids and the crimes that he was in there for. So he is evil beyond belief. I don't think there's nothing more to add about that figure, John Charles, but by all intents and by members of staff as well, along the years as well, doesn't talk, um, doesn't really get on with anybody, does, does his own thing all day. But when talking about his case, that's when he seems so, whether he's got mental health issues or not, who, who the rubbing hell cares, he's a complete and utterly evil man. Now, long Larton again now, right? So we got to fix so hold on, I got to jo Right, what about one rule for one and one rule for all, because there was an old man called John Straffan, right? In for something really terrible, right? He was probably um, Britain's one of the most long-serving prisoners at one stage, either before Brady or after, uh, and then somebody else took over the mantle um, after, he, after he died in, in custody. I can't remember where he died and all that, right? But what I do remember is that when I was in Long Larton, he was on another wing and he's old and gray and everything like that after spending something like 55 years in custody. And correct me if, my, if I'm wrong, 
he was meant to have been one of the last men to was about to get hanged in the old days and slipped out of that on some kind of technicality. I can't remember that bit as well. But one of the questions that was always asked was how come nobody done him? And he was in something, he was in for something awful. And then a couple of people said, oh, it just wasn't worth it. He's an old man and blah, blah, blah. But I said, yeah, but you got time to burn out um, other figures that are in for armed robbery that had a fight with this one and that one in another jail or got attacked by blah, blah, blah. Not saying, of course, none of it's right. We're not promoting that kind of stuff. But he stayed on normal location without getting harmed. And I think to myself, well, one rule for one and one rule for one, whatever, I have the moral code of, of jail, which, you know, Razor Smith rightly says, I suppose is fantasy in prison jargon, if you get what I mean, that, you know, the worst is of the worst, the worst is of the worst. But what I'm really trying to say is that why didn't nothing really happen to him, if you get what I mean? Or did I get on the end of the old era and people just wasn't interested with all the new gang culture and that kind of stuff, but yet he'd been on normal location nearly all that time and nothing happened to him, if you get what I mean. It's mad, isn't it? So you think about it, some get a f some do slip under the net. So I put him down as one of the evilest men that I ever met. Um, looking at him from a distance for a fence, walking around on his own, you quite clearly see, as well as that child uh, that was once in a cage, you know, like when you go down to healthcare in Long Lawn, there's some separated bits for the Rule 43, and that one sighting of John Charles and the sighting of Straffan, uh, not saying that I am a top psychologist and all that, but remember what I said to you about Belfield, amongst other figures as well, um, their eyes tell its own true story, uh, that you are evil beyond belief. It's so, so, so easy to spot for a man like me. Do you get what I'm saying to you? There's one case that always bothered me in particular, and that was that Dixie Geezer, who murdered a young lady from Croydon called Sally Bowman or whatever. I uh, really felt for that case as well. I remember seeing him somewhere, um, walking through from workshops or whatever, and I had a good look at him, the same look in his eyes as well. Uh, maybe once sometime one of you top psychologists out there tell me how is it that we can look, some of us, and know straight away that we're in the absolute presence of real, real evil. But that's Long Lawton for you. Not just Long Lawton, but in a nutshell, some of the evilest and a lot of murders have happened in that place over a number, a number of years. So what does that tell you? And I know there's been murders in Whitemore in recent times as well. I think there was a couple in Franklin. But over the years, I tend to see here, remember, a four, five, six of these murders that I'm talking about to you. And um, someone's ringing shit of oh, those murders. But basically what I'm trying to say to you, to divide it up a little bit, you're asking me about evil killers and seeing a bit with my own eyes and what others have said to me. Uh, but there you have it. Because as soon as that thing with Victor happened, he came back over to normal location. How about that? So that shows you uh, the strength. And it's always worth me mentioning, you know. It's all like me saying, yeah, he was a legendary hitman of some kind. And... You know, if you messed about with him, but he only messed about with you if you messed about with him. Unless, of course, it was a favour for somebody else, which we were all guilty of a little bit, if you get what I mean. But another thing I forgot to tell you about him, that you know that every single penny he made from the workshops and through his other business things and that, Victor sent all his money back home. I don't know whether he had a daughter or he had a sister or he had... He had family over there because he used to show me the letters. But every penny he used to have, he used to come and show me his registered delivery things and get money sent over to his family. So, you know what I mean? Behind, you know, all what's all being said and all that, his heart is showing you something there that morally, you know, he still wanted to do the right thing in some aspects, if you get what I mean. So I just thought I'd mention that to you today. Um, but I am coming up with four, four, four more evil killers uh, beyond belief 
uh, ones that we, I think you've been asking me about for some time, but clearer and clearer. Uh, I might go live. I'll let you know what's going on, all right, after my travels. But sending loads of love to you as well.